Hello everyone and welcome to this uh, course uh, which is uh, geographic information systems and uh, this is the first discussion which we are going to have uh, related with this course and uh, the first uh, uh, question is basically what is uh, GIS. So, in short uh, geographic information systems we call as uh, GIS. Uh, as uh, you know that uh, this is not uh, today which has been developed, it has taken many many years or decades uh, to develop and uh, first uh, I would like to dedicate this thing to the uh, a person who developed GIS who gave the concept of GIS, not only concept but also developed and it is known as, he is known as the father of GIS, his name is Roger Tomlinson and uh, I will also narrate little history related with the, his development and that he was a, a, or he is computer scientist and when he was working for Ottawa Municipal Corporation, Ottawa is capital of Canada and a, a, there a task was given to him to develop a system so that different networks can be maintained. The problem was that because many underground networks were located at different depths and sometime located also differently. And uh, when one party say water supply party goes for repair, some repair or laying new line, they used to cut the telephone line or power supply or other things. So, the task was given to Roger Tomlinson to develop a system so that before a, a party for repair or maintenance is dispatched, uh, the party should know exactly at what depth they will find which network. And for that purpose, uh, he started developing this on the deck 20 machines and uh, to do, uh, compare to what uh, today we are having the powerful machines at that time uh, as comparison to today it was not that powerful uh, machines but uh, he developed the first uh, uh, this system and he gave this name geographic information systems and uh, there were one prefix also that was the Canadian GIS, CGIS and uh, of course later on and then some company uh, ventured in this one and uh, that is a ESRI in a, or in short we say ISRI, Environmental Science Research Institute, it's a private uh, enterprise, private company owned by husband and wife uh, that is uh, Jack Dangermond and Laura Dangermond of USA and they started developing a more user friendly uh, GI, commercial GIS that was first GIS was developed ARC info on again uh, uh, machines uh, which we are not again they were running either on Unix or Sun Solaris uh, operating systems and the cost was very heavy. Nowadays uh, the development has come to the level uh, where we can have even uh, a stripped version of GIS or a custom design GIS even on our smart mobiles. So, the technology uh, has moved from there uh, to what we see today and uh, as we know that uh, uh, technology related with computers, technology related with communication improves and also the location technology that is uh, navigation technology through GNSS and uh, global navigation satellite systems that improves. So, the GIS applications will improve, GIS system will is going to be also improved. So, this is a very brief history about uh, what is basically GIS, who developed the GIS, exact definition of GIS we will discuss in a uh, few minutes time. I would like uh, to explain these, uh, you know, this basically is a one single water set shown as A and B and as you can see here uh, that uh, uh, there is a, uh, in, if I discuss uh, the figure A. Uh, you will you would see that there is a area in the southwest quadrant which is marked uh, uh, dash with dash lines. This is the area which is shown that uh, deforestation will be done, a plant deforestation will be done. And if it is done, uh, then what is going to be the soil moisture conditions in that particular water set? What those who are not familiar uh, with the word water set basically is a hydrological unit and uh, and the you are seeing in a 3D perspective. So, what would happen uh, if that, um, uh, that area of forest at that particular location is removed from that water set? 
and the B uh, B figure is basically the same water set, but the location of the deforestation area has been changed. And as you can see very carefully that uh, there are many areas, especially in the uh, this part that is southwest part, and uh, the and the conditions are going to be completely changed if uh, uh, the B proposal is accepted, uh, like a forest is uh, or deforestation is done in the northwest part of this water set. So, uh, nothing has happened in the ground, but through GIS modeling that is very uh, ultimate aim of using GIS generally is to model or models are for prediction. So, how to predict a uh, particular scenario or few scenarios based on the actions which are being planned. That is the main purpose ultimate purpose of GIS is like that. Nothing has happened on the ground, things are being planned and uh, a, GIS ex, a GIS expert uh, can provide different scenarios to a and uh, to higher ups or decision makers and then they can take the best decision. GIS expert can also suggest that as per his analysis, this is the best decision. But uh, before that nothing happens on the ground, whether it is a soil moisture condition analysis or is a root alignment for civil engineering or for any such purposes, uh, uh, this, uh, this thing uh, can be employed. Even electrical engineers nowadays have started using GIS to plan their uh, uh, lines, power supply or towers, huge towers they install for power supply. So, that can also be and there it can also be used and optimum uh, optimum path for uh, that layout uh, can be thought before anything really happens on the ground. So, it, it on, not only saves the resources, but also saves time and the best decisions can be taken uh, by the uh, decision makers that is the biggest advantage of GIS. So, what exactly basically and uh, uh, GIS uh, which is which includes three words or I would call them three terms basically geographic information system. So, geographic information system the first word is geographic some people may get uh, confused uh, that uh, it is probably uh, related with geography not at all the word geographic means it relates to the places on the earth surface where something is. Basically, uh, what is anything, any object which is present on the surface of the earth and nowadays even also moon or Mars where our satellites have reached there. And then that uh, individual objects can be addressed using geographic location. How we address geographic location like latitude, longitude or in some other map projection we use like in UTM we use easting northing, but those are also geographic locations. So, uh, it is basically nothing to do with the geography, uh, but it is basically location specific data or location uh, objects which are having their own location. If I give an example like over the globe, India is having its own uh, location over the surface of the globe. And then within India, like I am speaking from Uttarakhand, Rudki, so within India, Uttarakhand is located. Then within Uttarakhand, Haridwar district is located. Within Haridwar district, Rudki is located. And within Rudki, IIT is located. And within IIT Rudki, and uh, this uh, e-learning center is located. And within e-learning center, I am in a specific room. So, that means every object can have its own unique geographic location we can give in terms of uh, latitude longitude. You are already familiar with the coordinate geometry. In coordinate geometry, we use geometric coordinate system, whereas in GIS, we use geographic coordinate system. So, but the concepts and whatever the understanding which we developed uh, while studying or going through this coordinate geometry in, in during our uh, uh, 10 or 10 plus 2 classes. And uh, these are all these concepts and understanding which we developed is going to be used in GIS as well. So, geographic basically uh, has to do with the location specific data or location uh, uh, that is present on the surface of the earth. Now, two, two more terms together 
information systems because uh, nowadays as uh, uh, we will see that the definition of GIS contains that it is a computer based information system. So, computers have to be used and for that we use the systems and these, these are uh, this uh, whole thing fall in the category of information system. What these systems allows us to manipulate, manipulate does not mean that we are distorting the data, not at all. Manipulate means changing from one format to another, maybe from analog to digital, maybe from digital format to another digital format or organizing differently rows as columns and column and rows and so on so forth. So, that is what is manipulate. Then summarize, query, the because GIS is having own a database system, we can also connect to the external database systems also. And so that it allows us to make ad hoc queries or you know regular queries very easily or sometimes very complicated queries. If our system is well developed, it is having rich, it is full of data, it is rich in data, then we can make very good query. We can also edit our data sets if we have collected and uh, of course, uh, finally, it is to visualize either on the screen or we can uh, take the printouts of our analysis output as I have uh, shown earlier like uh, here that the analysis is done, it is uh, shown on the screen. And uh, it is uh, basically uh, every information which is first organized on a GIS platform and then stored in the computer database. So, this is how the uh, three terms meaning here. Now, uh, I will go little slowly on this definition that is uh, a definition of uh, GIS or geographic information systems uh, basically is a computer based information system designed to accept large volumes of spatial data. Spatial data when we mention that means data which is having is geographic location. So, spatial data always will have its own location of the data. I gave the example like this room in a e-learning center uh, can be assigned a very specific location. So, that too can become spatial data. Even within this room, there are different benches and uh, uh, objects are there including myself can also be given a unique uh, ID as well as coordinate so that uh, I become also an a spatial object. So, GIS is a computer based information system designed to accept large volumes of spatial data. So, that a variety of data can also come in large volume. So, the next part is come that data is coming from variety of sources. Variety of sources means that data might be remote sensing data. So, that is coming from satellites. Data can be a field data that might be coming after field surveys, field investigations. Data might be available with some organization like meteorology data, like groundwater data or some other data sets like po uh, population data, pollution data. All these data may be in different formats. But the, what we will do be or if whatever the target is accordingly we collect the data from variety of sources and organize data. Organize means we uh, not only change the format, but we assign the geographic location if that data set which we have uh, brought in our system does not have that. So, geographic location or we have to make that data as a spatial data. And then efficiently store, efficiently store here means that we would like to store in a manner so that it can be retrieved very easily. If any data, if you go to the older file systems, a, a room or big go down may be full of files, but if I cannot retrieve a particular file, then it is useless information. So, in a computer uh, database, our aim is always to uh, to uh, store in a manner so that the data can be retrieved very easily. So, that is why these three terms are there efficiently store, retrieve and analyze. If I can retrieve the data, then next step comes the analysis part. And uh, also, uh, the next word is the model which I have underlined is that is the uh, ultimate aim basically of GIS is to model things to and use for prediction. 
and then and display that uh, that uh, two water set or one water set with two scenarios we have already seen that example that is was nothing but the modeling sometimes in modeling we may require an external expertise a gis expert is good of handling data within the gis platform but he, he may not have the knowledge about the models which predicts the soil moisture conditions he may not have a model which predicts the water flow in the underground conditions or ground water so we we may be requiring some expert so two experts one gis expert another expert coming from different field when they sit together then a new product new scenario can be developed and of course uh, then we display uh, create an output and they, these data analyze display everything these data according to user defined specifications a user has to be there who defined the specification that this is what i i want the output from gis this is this is how the analysis and modeling should be done uh, from and uh, the G, by the gis i will give you a very simple example many of us have started using these uh, apps uh, through our smart mobile about uh, calling a taxi or taking taxi services so whenever you use uh, these ola or uber or any other uh, uh, taxi services what do you do you are as an user you provide uh, the destination and uh, 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 where you are standing that information is already known to that app because it that information is coming from your gnss receiver which is already inside of your mobile so from where you want to go that information you need not to provide exact information is already fed to the system once you open this app and then destination you have to provide so you are an user you are defining now specifications next specification you are defining is which type of car do you want a big one or a smaller one or in between so whether you want micro or mini or large and or maybe a motorcycle or something depending on the city where this facilities are there and then they they then this information is fed to the system and then that system predicts that where other vehicles are there the type of vehicle as per your definition uh, you have provided those types of vehicles where they are and how much time they will take to reach to your destination uh, where you are standing and uh, how much time also once you take this it will also let you know that how much time it will take to reach to the ultimate dest destination which you have provided and this is all based on the prediction based on the prediction the data is that current data depending on the traffic conditions so in peak hours the time which is shown by the system is maybe very longer whereas in uh, you know the midnight or uh, 3 am or 2 am that may be half or even one fourth time so this all data is coming from variety of sources and uh, that software or that app is a custom design gis product it is not only using gis but as i have said gnss technology and computer communication technology or communication technology through your smart mobile and then you get the convenience you get the vehicle as per your specifications and you reach to your destination so this is one very simple example we have started using gis if i give the next another example that is google earth or google map again Uh, you are having a detailed if i talk about say google map then you are having detailed road or street map in the google map and again you provide there your location and uh, sometimes say uh, if your computer is already known your location no issue it automatically is fed to the system your current location and your destination then it predicts two three uh, routes and uh, fastest routes or you know uh, routes uh, which doesn't have much a toll plaza and other things you choose whichever the route if i give example like if i if i uh, feel that i am from rudki to dehradun i would like to go generally it shows the two routes uh, one is by haridwar another one by a uh, place which is called chutmalpur now these two routes will have different distances and also have different travel times now the choice is with me 
as per my specifications so i can take the decision now as a decision maker for a small decision that which route i should follow and that way i i travel to dehradun so this is how the prediction is done into the gis now we will continue on this discussion about data information and knowledge so first uh, we discuss the data versus information basically uh, data uh, because the uh, if you recall the definition of gis which we have just discussed that data is coming from variety of sources now what is basically data data are data is a basically a plural word and uh, it it is a uh, raw facts basically so it, this is the raw facts are there and data by itself generally differs from information because information uh, bec- uh, only data after analysis becomes information so data has to be processed otherwise data simply if i am having a, a data uh, say on a, a print form or data i am having pen drive or hard disk doesn't mean anything but if i perform an analysis on the data even if it is textual data or data related with the census or any other thing it is just raw facts it has to be analyzed then only it becomes information so data and information are two different things data in the hierarchy is at the lowest level which is nothing but is a raw facts so data has to be transformed through analysis into information and information is an answer to a question based on raw data to some extent some questions can be answered after the processing and the when data becomes information questions can be answered so that's the another advantage of that now gis is capable of transforming your data into information so because it's a computer based information system and therefore it can do lot of analysis on special data there might be database management system and someone can say it might be like uh, you know these cat cat cam and uh, like softwares like autocad others no they don't have the database they cannot handle the special data gis is the only platform unique platform which handles special data data which is having a uh, geographic location so that data can be used analyzed and that data uh, we can uh, transform into the information so if i if i so in few steps this what we have discussed and uh, uh, to reach to up to knowledge that uh, raw facts or data using computers we can in, uh, we can take uh, we can uh, make as information or it can be transformed to information but when we use the gis on data or information gis analysis and model then we can convert that uh, and data basically originally data com- coming into your system and ultimately you are getting the knowledge knowledge means it can not only answer one question it can answer many questions and uh, many complicated queries can also be raised so uh, if i give the example of uh, like a je examination which is conducted every year uh, so in je examination whoever applies to appear in the main examination their data that candidates details are stored in a computer system to some extent that uh, is analyzed and uh, center wise uh, that list are prepared so that data after certain analysis becomes information now if we bring the location data of each candidate and plot on a map of india then we might be able to see the pattern or distribution pattern of the candidates appearing say in je advance or in je main examination so if i take the example of je advance examination then we might find that there are clusters in india where we see that lot of candidates are appearing for advance examination je advance examination now the question because the very good part of gis is it answers certain questions few questions decision makers can further raise few questions and then those can also be answered later on so once i plot the location of all main qualified candidates for je advance their location once is plotted i might be able to see some clusters so the next question will come why there are clusters 
is it because of uh, socio economic conditions is it because of good power supply or is it because of coaching so we may find that around kota maybe around jaipur maybe around delhi maybe around kanpur hyderabad we may observe several uh, such clusters so if we want to further analyze those who, those who have selected what were the background socio economic background whether they have studied in government college private college all that can be done on the geographic platform that is on gis and lot many questions can be answered further which and uh, currently that kind of analysis using gis is not done on je uh, candidates but this is how it can be done and new knowledge about the candidates and their success rate and their location can be developed so that can be a very useful information for decision makers to think about how gis or how je should be conducted in future a uh, let me also mention the three terms three technologies first is gis we have just started discussing on this the entire course on this 60 lectures on gis but very briefly i will uh, touch also earlier we used to call as gps so deliberately i have written gps here but now uh, we can use a different term uh, which also encompasses gps technology which is called the gnss global navigation satellite systems so gnss includes gps gnss includes the glonass which is russian navigation system gnss includes the beidou which is a chinese uh, uh, navigation system uh, GN, uh, gnss also includes galileo which is a, a european system and gnss also includes indian system uh, earlier it used to be called irnss now a new name new term has been given which is navic so G, gnss includes every such uh, navigation system so there are lot many systems that is why uh, global navigation satellite systems so it's a plural is there and remote sensing all these three remote sensing which is based on the satellite data acquisition system so we acquire the data so remote sensing provides the data gnss provides the location whereas gis is a platform where all analysis can be done data from gnss data from remote sensing and data from other sources recall the definition data coming from special data coming from variety of sources so not only the data from gnss remote sensing but from other sources can also come now these three technologies which i have just mentioned gis gp gnss and remote sensing are generic spatial and digital technologies generic i have just explained but i will again further elaborate on this generic uh, you nowadays we hear a lot about generic medicines so they do not have a particular brand but the salt in it uh, is what is like uh, uh, there is a uh, this uh, any medicine you take like paracetamol or other things so uh, a company might be making and uh, using the same salt uh, as a different brand name so uh, nowadays government is promoting that uh, uh, people should use the generic medicine no brand name or doctor should prescribe the generic medicine here generic means basically that these technologies can be applied for variety of applications i as a geologist i use these technologies for my own applications for maybe for ground water exploration maybe for ground water recharge studies maybe for earthquake related studies and maybe for landslides or other natural hazards a civil engineer may use these all three technologies in integrated fashion or in separately and uh, for route alignment for pollution studies for uh, surveying and topographic surveying and uh, for transport planning for many applications they can use and the same technology can also be used by electrical engineer same technology can be used by hydrologist or earthquake engineer so that is why it is called generic so all these three technologies are generic special i have already explained that these technologies are having location specific gnss itself is providing location and the remote sensing data is also a location specific data and gis is a platform to handle special location data or special data so 
the, these technologies are generic, spatial and of course digital. And GIS is a computer based platform, G, GPS or GNSS data is coming on our uh, receivers or mobile in a digital format and remote sensing data is also recorded in digital format. And therefore, because of these three common things and with these three technologies, their integration becomes much, much easier. If I give example of, uh, I gave example of these Ola Uber apps or Google map, now I will give example of Google Earth. Google Earth is having satellite images of different spatial resolutions in its database. And the database is very efficiently retrieved as we keep zooming uh, to our area of interest. So that efficient storage and retrieval is very much essential component of Google Earth. Now, uh, another very important thing which is stored in the background, which generally we do not see in, in front, is the digital elevation model, which is the topographic surface of the Earth, which is also stored on or which is also accessible through Google Earth. So, you get not only the latitude longitude, but you also get the elevation height of uh, topographic height wherever you are located on Google Earth. And all this is coming through a, a computer technology. So, the integration of remote sensing and the digital elevation model part of GIS, satellite images are part of uh, your remote sensing and location is also coming from GPS. So, Google Earth is one of the best examples of integration of these three technologies and a very user friendly, very convenient uh, product where you access a huge data set that is not residing on your computer but remotely and getting very good uh, uh, advantages of uh, seeing things in 3D and so on and so forth because the digital elevation model allows through Google Earth to see things in 3D. You can develop your fly through, you can see things in 3D and so on and so forth. Uh, I, I said that uh, somewhere in 1964, and this Canadian GIS was developed by Roger Tomlinson. But the concept of GIS without computers was already there. So, I, I can call as a analog GIS. And this was, a, this is the oldest example which we get in our literature about the concept of GIS is in 1854, there were a cholera epidemic. We are going through the corona pandemic which is more ex, uh, extensive or worldwide phenomena or worldwide pandemic uh, rather than cholera epidemic in 1854 in London. And what they to in order to assess because it is a waterborne disease. So, it was it, it is very much a, a search was that a, a which water pump or tube well is providing uh, that contaminated uh, uh, water to the resident which is causing the cholera. So, three layers are together here. One is the street map in the background, then uh, cholera affected people are also shown and through the locations, uh, their spatial locations and water pumps or tube wells locations are also shown. So, when you see in the center here, what you found that uh, around this center lot of uh, uh, cholera uh, affected people are there. But if I see this well or these wells, uh, though people are living in the, those parts, they are using the water from those pumps, but not getting any cholera. So, then it became very easy and uh, then people were stopped not to use the water from those particular tube wells uh, or uh, water pumps, which are providing uh, the, um, you know, bad quality water to the resident and then this uh, cholera epidemic uh, could be controlled. That too in 1854 and without using computer based information system. So, simple map overlay analysis was done using three layers and still solutions were found. But nowadays all this analysis can be done very quickly. Even for corona, we have been doing uh, this kind of uh, seeing the plots which are available on uh, different uh, through uh, servers or different portals and you would notice that wherever the density of population is very much, the 
and uh, then you find that the corona affected people are more. So, it is related because the social distancing, good social distancing or required uh, social distancing is, uh, is not being maintained in a highly densely populated areas. If you see the center India and uh, like part of southern UP or northern MP or some part of Rajasthan, you see that uh, hard, there are not uh, as many as people as you see around uh, uh, Mumbai or Delhi or Hyderabad or Chennai because uh, population density is relatively less and uh, automatically because of less population density social distancing is being maintained and we are seeing uh, less uh, corona affected people in there. So, these things can be analyzed and lot of answers just uh, uh, using two layers, one is the population density, another is corona affected people location, we can analyze the such thing. I did not name so far the application of GIS in agriculture. Remote sensing is being extensively applied and uh, you being used for uh, uh, in agriculture field along with the GIS also. So, for uh, uh, for irrigation purposes, for water supply or for groundwater estimation which is used for the uh, agricultural practices or crop estimation which implies not only your uh, remote sensing data but other parts also. Uh, GIS uh, historical brown, uh, background I have already developed, uh, I had already discussed but very briefly I will discuss this point from other systems point of view. Uh, because uh, uh, GIS has incorporated already developed technologies into it and the best example is like digital cartography and CAD computer aided design systems. So, the concepts or uh, technologies tools which we are there have also in have been incorporated into the GIS and database management system or DBMS that is also a very integral part of GIS. So, those concepts except that here we handle the spatial or geographic low, uh, uh, spatial data or data which is having geographic location. So, database management tools are also into the GIS. So, from that historical point of view, whatever the best which is available through other already established technologies is being incorporated into GIS and more GIS is developed, more users are there more new questions are asked and people expect more solutions through GIS and that compels the better development of GIS or more development of GIS. So, it is a continuous ongoing activity. You show certain analysis to your higher ups using GIS, they will, uh, they will appreciate but they will ask can you do further like this, can you do like this and you start uh, again go back to your machine and you start doing that kind of analysis which your uh, higher ups have, ha has, has asked and then you develop something new, they again you show to and they again ask. So, it is a continuous ongoing activity, thus all the time solutions may not be exactly available with you. Uh, when I was showing this uh, cholera epidemic scenario, there are three layers where they are. Now, I will uh, because uh, in GIS we store information in different layers or thematic layers. So, if I see from uh, the real world start from real world scenario, uh, then real world is having all kinds of data, but we can segment the data in order to organize and efficiently store and analyze data on a GIS platform. So, the real world can be segmented into different layers or different types of spatial data. Like for example, a land use data. So, that data nowadays we get from satellite, remote sensing data, elevation data, digital elevation models. These are also being prepared using uh, satellite data, but uh, they, they are they fall part of GIS and in the, uh, in the last few lectures we will be discussing lot about digital elevation models and uh, derivatives, what how best we can exploit this uh, uh, data set which is digital elevation model. And then parcels also, parcels means here is the land records. So, land records are uh, nowadays in like in India, they are with the revenue department 
and at many now many states have organized the data on a GIS platform, and a lot of uh, uh, disputes will also be resolved, which are related with revenue or khasra, depending on the language which is used in different states. So these once the data becomes on GIS platform and it is integrated data with other data sets, lot of problems can be solved or lot of answers can be given. Then street data which is a line data that is also uh, so this uh, through this example what we are seeing and of course uh, locations maybe households or locations of customers, locations of earthquakes, locations of water wells, uh, anything uh, can be stored in the point form also. So, the real world can be segmented into different layers and then it is stored and, and, and in a particular analysis I can use all layers together or I can use two layers, three layers, five layers or I can bring few more layers from other sources which are not shown in this particular example and then can analyze the data. So, this, this basically gives you the idea that how the data is analyzed or is stored or managed on a GIS platform. Again uh, the real world is shown in the bottom, then we start segmenting the data. So, that uh, this is entirely integrated data like a data source, a street data, a building data, vegetation data is there and everything is stored in the layer. So, when we see building data only buildings are shown here, when we see the street data only streets are shown and as soon as we start putting all together then we reach to, to the real world. But remember one thing very important point which I am going to discuss a real world cannot be stored on a computer platform whether it is a GIS or database or any other thing. Real world means one to one scale and all these are the models they are the they are the abstract reality the stripped version of reality not exactly the real world. So, real world is available to us at one to one scale. So, if you want to see we see every day we can go outside and see the real world also and even in this room I am seeing the real world. But if I start uh, putting this uh, re, uh, details of this room on a computer then I am uh, taking abstract information, I am reducing the information, I am reducing the details of the information and then uh, putting into a computer. So, com uh, computer cannot store there is no computer in future also I am sure there cannot be any system or computer which can really store a real world. Whatever is stored is the modeled thing the street version or abstract reality. So, this modeling part we will be also discussing and models are also assumed lot of things. So, only the key parameters are taken in a model and other less influencing parameters are ignored or assumed that this is like that. But real world everything in one to one scale and real. Uh, almost uh, uh, same discussion, but uh, as say that uh, you know real world, but important point here see the direction of arrows analysis and refining of data and then it goes to the decision makers. Decision makers accept certain things, but they ask to do further analysis we can come back to the real world can again enrich our analysis part here and can go back again to decision makers. So, the real world is again segmented here into different layers. So, you are uh, the people sitting at the top they are uh, basically strategic level then some people are collection and data management these are the real GIS experts and of course, real world is there. So, the caption says is simplified word can be represented it is not real world, but a simplified word can be represented. So, uh, if we see in a um, machine form how it is stored and the GIS and uh, data and other things then we are having on a GIS basically GIS uh, you require a computer as well as a software different GIS softwares are available. So, uh, those software will support your conversion that is conversion tools are there tools for raster data a one type of spatial data like raster data vector data these details we will be discussing. Then attribute data which we know through the database management system and then you are having digital maps and while creating this 
and of course in the last you are having applications through this you can create map you can create reports you can create queries on the right side you are having interface tools so computer aided registers are there computer aided and you know uh, processes are available raster image cad drawings laser images and other drawings those outputs can also be created finally what we are interested to show our analysis results either in form of map report or queries or in chart so that uh, and one other point before i close this discussion is why gis is unique because uh, people may say that there are already cat can system available and so on gis as i have been mentioning it handles the spatial data data which is having location or location specific data which can be referenced to its location and that to in geographic form that is in latitude longitude and gis makes uh, connections between activities based on spatial proximities so gi on gis platform not only you do the analysis but you also look the neighborhood the proximity and then analysis can be performed the simplest example like creating a buffer along a highway and finding out uh, what is the pollution level and uh, uh, prote for protection point of view in case of forest or in mining other thing so not only the data itself but in the surrounding neighborhood proxim proximity analysis can also be done now who are the users of gis some we have discussed but in a more systematic manner government different governments state central or federal they are using gis industries are using using gis of course academicians are also using gis for what purpose they are using gis they are using gis for transportation i gave the example of uh, and these taxi fleets there are buses which for trains like indian railways uh, have is uh, already completed installation of uh, gnss receivers and on a gis platform so they know about each and every uh, engine of goods train where it is located how it is moving so that is completely transportation system gis based then in hydrology geology demographic crime health and this is non exhaustive list more and more applications more and more bridges with different disciplines are being developed related with gis if i in bol if i go for a gis project then there are different stages of gis first we have to define the problem for what purpose and for what is our aim to use gis then you need of course gis uh, software and hardware and then you get the data uh, always it is uh, to acquire as organized and as clean data as possible clean data means uh, and data doesn't have the error and then analysis which is performed on gis platform and finally results are uh, you know through interpretation analysis results are created so this brings to the end of our discussion about uh, what is basically gis in very brief i have explained to you what is gis thank you very much